Lord Jesus, finally the day has dawned when you desire to eat the Passover with your holy apostles. We ask you to show us your heavenly banquet on the last day, to foster in us a desire for it and to lead us to it, so that we may be seated at your table there. We glorify and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, forever. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the Lamb of God who voluntarily became the Paschal Lamb and offer himself as a redeeming sacrifice. He truly gave us his body as food and his blood as drink, as a pledge of eternal life. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. O oh Christ, you are the word of the eternal Father, and you became man to save us. You fulfilled the laws of the old covenant to lead us to worship in spirit and in truth. You washed the feet of your apostles to teach us humility and love. You ain't the Passover lamb with them, so that you yourself might become our Passover and our lamb. We glorify and thank you because you offered yourself for us as an eternal Paschal sacrifice. You gave us the mystery of the Holy Eucharist as a pledge of resurrection and new life. You shared your eternal priesthood with the apostles and their successors, the priests of the new covenant. Through their hands you offer yourself to the Father as a pure and acceptable sacrifice. Now, O Lord, as we commemorate your Last Supper, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to give your church priest who shall offer you in sacrifice, celebrate your mysteries, and make known your teachings, that your name may be blessed, your kingdom come, and your will be done on earth. Grant forgiveness to sinners and peace to the world. Grant us good life so that we may pass safely from this world to everlasting life. And in your heavenly kingdom sit with you at the table of your eternal Paschal banquet. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit forever. By God's command.
O priest and holy sacrifice, O host and banquet, accept our incense and our prayers. At this Paschal feast in which you have allowed us to participate, by giving us your body to eat and your blood to drink. May we also share in your passion, your death, and in your resurrection, that we may one day meet you at your heavenly banquet. We glorify and thank you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Kadishat Aloha Kadishat Hayel Tono Kadishat Lama Hoyo Bolto Ikra See the true bread. See our Lord's cup filled with his blood shed to save us. Take and drink it for forgiveness and for new life. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, for I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord unworthily will have to answer for the body and blood of the Lord. A person should examine himself, and so eat the bread and drink the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many among you are ill and infirm, and a considerable number are dying. If we discerned ourselves, we would not be under judgment. But since we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. Praise be to God always. This is my body, and this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. 
For the proclamation of the gospel of our Saviour announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The evangelist Luke writes, Now the festival of unleavened bread, called the Passover, was drawing near. And the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to put him to death, for they were afraid of the people. And then Satan entered into Judas, the one surnamed Iscariot, who was counted among the twelve. And he went to the chief priests and the temple guards to discuss a plan for handing him over to them. They were very pleased and they agreed to pay him money. He accepted their offer, and he sought a favorable opportunity to hand him over to them in the absence of a crowd. When the day of the festival of unleavened bread had arrived, the day for sacrificing the Passover lamb, he sent out Peter and John, instructing them Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. They asked him, Where do you wish us to make the preparations? And he answered them, When you go into this city, a man shall meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him to the house that he enters, and say to the master of that house, The rabbi says to you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room that is already furnished. Make the preparations there. Then they went off and they found everything exactly as he had told them. And there they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, he took his place at table with the apostles. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall not eat it again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you, that from this time onward I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which shall be given for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which shall be shed for you. And yet, behold, the hand of the one who is to betray me is with me on this table. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to debate among themselves who it might be among them who would do such a deed. This is the truth, peace be with you.
With great desire have I desired to eat this Passover with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. It's in this Hebrew terminology, with great desire have I desired. It echoes in some way the words of God in the garden. If you partake of this tree, you shall die the death. And our Lord's echoing to the contradiction of that by saying, I have desired with great desire to eat this Passover with you. It's a Hebraic way of speaking, of using to make the superlative. And what our Lord, of course, does on this night is make a presence among us, a historical presence. For all existence requires presence and finds its origin in presence and in love. All things radiate out from God because God loves them and in loving, he chooses to create. And of course, his presence must be to all creatures or else they wouldn't exist at all. You, you stop and ponder the idea, what does it mean to be? What does it mean to exist? The very word itself, when we say to exist, the word itself tells us nothing because the word in the Latin literally means to stand outside. To stand outside of what? To stand outside of nothing? But what is nothing except exactly no thing, not existent? And so all you do is go in a circle. If we ask someone, do you know what existence is? We all say yes. We see it, we touch things around us. And now, and now with, of course, the great magnificence of the ability to observe, we can see billions of miles away and we can perceive other things now that were unattainable by just simply human senses. But still the question always remains perennially. What does it mean to be? What does it mean to be not nothing? What does it mean to exist, to stand outside and yet it's something that we know, and that is why the divinity is present to everything that exists, because the divinity simply is self-same existence. It is that which exists by its very nature. It is not something like us, just bigger. It is something completely, infinitely distant from what we are as reflections of existence which is why we have those famous words on Mount Sinai from the burning bush when, God, when Moses asked the name, what is the Shem, the Shem, what is the name of this God, this being that speaks from the burnished bush? And famously he says, I am who am. This notion of existence has to be present to everything for anything in its limitedness to exist. But that's not the reason why God creates. God creates because he loves. When we love, we discover goodness in other people and other things. As we've mentioned often, it can be very base. It can be just simply, we like candy. And it can also be that we are drawn to a very noble and honorable person and love them as a response. But the divinity, self-same existence, doesn't discover goodness anywhere. It loves first, and in loving, chooses to create the things that it chooses in its love. So that love is the origin of all things, and love is the way that all things return. But of course, trees, rocks, bunny rabbits, and waterfalls don't love the way that intelligent beings can perceive goodness and love in response. The other things of this earth, rocks, planets, whatever they may be, they respond to the presence of creation and function according to the natures that they have. But the natures that belong to human beings is to be able to know and to love. It's that tripartite division that we call spirit that we talked about last night with the healing ceremony. And the response that was meant to be made is the perception of the divinity to respond in the knowledge of what divinity is and to respond by love to the infinite goodness. And as we know, in the garden, 
Mankind chose otherwise. It chose itself in place of the eternal goodness and eternal existence. And because of that wound that is made then upon the mind and the will of humanity at that point, that wound continues. And so when we made that division last night of presence, of body, soul, spirit, the physicality of our existence, the psychological, emotional aspect of our existence, and that immaterial aspect of the ability to know and to choose of free will and knowledge, these are all what make the one very complex thing that we call a human being. So that when God enters into time and enters into history in the person of Jesus Christ, he is once again doing something because of love. Not creating in this sense, but coming to restore the very wounded humanity which was meant to be the perfection of his reflection on earth, in creation. And so when we mentioned in the beginning about presence, the incarnation that takes place, the death, the resurrection, the life of our Lord that we celebrate over these weeks and these days, is something that happens historically to our Lord, but it is meant to be ours by being grafted into that life of our Lord. But our Lord being glorified historically is present to us, yes, but he makes that presence to us in what we call the divine Eucharist, and hence the divine mysteries, which is why then our Lord, what he does in giving himself fully, because as we know, love always gives of ourselves to the one that we love. The Eucharist is the fullest expression of divine love possible. The taking of that meal of the bread and the wine, this is my body, this is my blood, to make present to you this reality is also to give to you fully the very possibility to communicate in what and who I am. And so the very Eucharist from generation to generation from that night is the continuance of presence and of divine love. The response that we always have to make still is there. No one is going to be healed if they choose not to be healed. No one is going to arrive at Shlomo if they don't wish to, because again, by our nature, we are beings that know and beings that love, that can choose. And we can choose not to love. We can choose to ignore. And of course, ignoring in our English meaning means to kind of turn your back on someone. But ignore literally from the Latin origin means not to know. And to ignore something, we can choose not to know someone. We can choose to ignore that colleague. We can choose to ignore members in our family because we can choose to love or not to love. And our response of the way that we respond of loving or not loving is also a response of what we know, what we desire to know, what we desire not to know, and what we desire to ignore. The Eucharist is this reality that exists on planet Earth to allow the ability to touch and to perceive and to see our Lord by the illumination of the faith and by the transformation of the will. The illumination of that mind and the beginning of that healing of spirit and of soul and of body begins by that knowledge of the rectification and the healing of that mind, of the spirit. That's why we talk about the illumination of the faith. It's an enlightenment. It is a light given to strengthening to heal. So that was, was given to them in the moment of their existence, the first man and first woman, that they willfully chose not to know and thereby creating an actual, absolutely profound act of violence against themselves, the faith is the first healing, the beginning of the remedy of that mind and of the will that chose themselves to love first before that which is. That transformation of the will is done by that virtue. And the word virtue only means strength in its Latin origin. The faith is a virtue. Charity is a virtue, not because we think they're nice, but because they are a strengthening of the human being 
who is weakened. And so because we are a spirit, soul, and body, our Lord has given us the ability, in a sense, to touch divinity through the divine Eucharist, which is why we call them the divine mysteries, which is why when we refer to the divine offering, it's precisely that, the alohoyo corbono. Corban is what we offer up. And why do we offer it up? We offer it up because Jesus is the one who gave us the ability to offer his death and resurrection. It really has nothing to do with us initially. And we can choose to enter into that divinity or we can choose to withhold our love from it. We can choose to enter into that divinity or we can choose to ignore it. But the reality is placed before us as an ability to be able to come into contact to what is presence and what is infinite and eternal love. It's for us a consolation because one of the things that's very clear in this present crisis is the unknown, the unknown, the unknown. But of course, when we look at the origin of all things, there is a, a pivotal center of stability because there is divine presence in everything. Every one of those little viruses flying around, the divinity is present to it, or else it couldn't exist. All the little tiny proteins that make up that virus, to each of those proteins, divinity is present, or else they wouldn't exist. It is a profound mystery that divinity is everywhere and simultaneously transcendent to everything. So that when our Lord establishes this great mystery, this hidden reality, this divine reality, it is for us to be healed. It is for us to have cons fine consolation. And in that very word, consolation, meaning that it is for us to find strength. It doesn't matter what the world can dish out. There is always in the center of it for those who have eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to respond of wills choosing love, a profound and infinite stability of God, and not just simply God in some sense of ethereal, imaginary entity, but of God who has become man for us, lived in time historically, and has given us the ability to participate with him generation to generation. That's the divine mysteries. And that is a profound consolation and st stable point for us as we walk through this valley of tears. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God from God to me, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Tell what my deb hey dallo ho, while what I lo ho dam hard a tariot. When a silver tiger toho, hey, lal by cock my student, hired Lord Paul Salah.
Find there is a sheet for the transfer hymn that should be in your pews for this evening. The Lord. Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, Saint Mary, and Saint Jude, and Saint Charbel. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the repose of all the deceased of the Deeb and Samaya Ferris family. In and attentions of the Catholic Extension, the Society and its donors, remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Continue with the Anaphora of St. John Chrysostom on page 876. 876. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God and Father, holy and glorious is your name. You deliver those who love you from all that is contrary to your will. May we, who have remained in your divine love, be made worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with a holy kiss. May we always speak words of peace, think of peace, and work for peace. Through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, we raise glory to you, to your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. Peace, love, and faith, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> O oh Lord, on high, hidden from all creation, you are peace, reconciling those who are enemies. 
You are forgiveness to those who sin. You are comfort to those who are sorrowful. Open the door of your mercy to our petitions, and in the abundance of your grace, accept our prayers. Make us children and heirs of your kingdom, through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, and through your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, you are adored by all. Angels bless you, humanity exalts you, and all creation glorifies you. Look upon your children who call out to you with purity and holiness. May we offer to you an acceptable sacrifice that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. Truly it is right and just to thank, adore, glorify, and bless the majesty of the one consubstantial Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a majesty that does not need our glory or become greater with our things. O Lord, those who sing your praises are countless, and they cry out with angelic voices, and with sweet melodies proclaiming, Glory to you, O God, the Heavenly Father, for you have exalted our weak human nature. In your mercy you sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. He dawned from the Holy Virgin like a ray of light from a bright cloud. He took the form of a slave, yet truly he is the Son of your majesty. He willingly became man to make us divine. He was born from a woman's womb, that we may be born again from a spiritual womb. He became our brother, so that through his grace we may become your children and theirs. He took us from being slaves and made us your children. He promised us a share in the reward that allows us to call you Abba, Father. He cleansed us from our sins with his precious blood that he poured out for us. For he is your only son. Kyrie eleison. Wabiyamo haudakum hasho dilema bedhaye. En sabe lachma bidao koni shonto. O barechu kadesh. Waxo ya bertal midao karomara. Saba chola mehne. Amen. 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 Hono denita de mo di la di a ti ki khadato nahlo fai kun wahlo sagiye mete shadu meti hem 
خوسون خمی و خوی نان قلم علمین This in memory of me, each time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you remember my death until I come again. God, who can comprehend that you willingly emptied yourself of your divine glory, who can explain your miraculous birth from a virgin, who can repay you for your saving passion, which you freely endured, who can praise your plan of salvation for us. We can only ask of you, a lover of all people, that the sacrifice which we have offered be accepted on your altar in heaven, the dwelling place of your hidden divinity, in the company of all the angels and saints. Through this sacrifice, may we be worthy of the forgiveness of our sins. When you come to judge the living and the dead, do not pass judgment upon us, nor deny us, saying, I do not know you. On that glorious and fearful day, do not separate us from you, nor cast us out of your paradise to a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Rather, because of your holy name, by which we have been called, to look with mercy upon us. In your compassion, you have made us worthy of the gift of your forgiving body and blood. So make us worthy to be one with you in holiness as you are one with your Father. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them, and because of them, pledge of the life to come, a body that grants us the everlasting joys of heaven, a body that renews our souls and bodies, a body that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. And that the mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ our God, be a blood that gives new life to those who receive it, a blood that gives us to the safe harbors and the dwellings of light. A blood that renews our souls and bodies, a blood that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. O Lord, in your great mercy, when this body and blood is mingled with our bodies and souls, grant that it may be for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for the everlasting joy and eternal life with all your sake. We offer you, Lord God, this pure and holy offering for your holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church, which you have redeemed. Gather her children into unity, love, and faith, and guide them in peace and security. 
We offer it for the pure bishops of the true faith, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bishara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, the Venerable Priests, the Chaste Deacons, the Pure Subdeacons, and all the Orders of the Church. Teach them the word of truth, so that they may spread it faithfully with justice and holiness. May they care for the flock that you have entrusted to them. Give them the proper means to accomplish your will and grant them a long life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the dejected, for orphans and widows, for the sick and the distressed, and for those tempted by evil spirits, be the guardian and refuge of their lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember the holy fathers, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, and confessors, especially the holy, glorious, and ever-blessed, ever-virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. John the Baptist, the messenger and forerunner, who witnessed the betrothal of your holy church to your son, glorious St. Stephen, the archdeacon and first martyr, and all who pleased you and professed your name. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. For all the faithful departed who have gone to you from this altar, from every place throughout the world, grant them rest in your heavenly dwellings with all your saints, and in your mercy forgive our sins and theirs. O Lord, do not deprive us of your mercy, but keep us in the palm of your hand, lest we fall and go astray, so that we may walk on your paths, follow your ways, and do your will. Forgive us and our departed, and pardon all sins and transgressions, hidden and seen, committed with or without full knowledge. Make us worthy of a faithful Christian death that is pleasing to you, and join us to your righteous ones and to those who have done your will that in us and in all things your blessed name may be glorified with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. O Lord, you are the pleasing oblation who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offered yourself as the Lamb. Through your mercy, may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father through you. To you be glory forever. O Lord, our Lord, you sent us your only Son, who is the radiance of your eternity. And he accomplished his plan of salvation for us, that we may come to you. May we call upon you with the prayer that he taught his holy disciples, saying, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory is the Lord. now. Yes, O merciful Lord, we ask for your compassion. By your grace, make us worthy that your glorious name may be made holy in us, that your kingdom come to assist us in our weakness, and that your will dwell within us. Deliver us from all difficult temptations. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours with your only Son and your Holy Spirit now and forever. Peace be with you. O oh Lord God, you are good and the lover of all people. Look upon those who bow their heads before your majesty and bless them with every spiritual blessing. Do not turn us away when we approach your divine and holy gifts, and let us not be guilty of unworthily receiving the body and blood of your only Son. Rather, make us worthy to share in your holy and life-giving mysteries with purity, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your good and Holy Spirit, now and forever. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity, one Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving body. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. Lord, our God, to you be glory.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, you have made us worthy to share in your holy body and in the cup of salvation. How can we repay you for these your gifts and graces and for your goodness? As you have called us to approach this life-giving banquet, make us worthy 
so that your body may be mingled with our bodies and your blood with our souls for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for eternal life. You are blessed in your kingdom is holy, and we raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit now and forever. Peace be with you. O oh God the Father, we bow before you and we entrust ourselves to your care. We ask you, imploring your mercy, to rest your right hand full of blessings upon us. Assist us, protect us, bless us, and sanctify us by the life-giving cross of your only Son. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and the blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. <clears throat>